Welcome back to the Modern Ham. Today I'm going to show you how to connect to a radio BBS node using a program called Paracon. So today I wanted to talk about connecting to a packet radio node, even though we've just set up a, B, a LIN BBQ node and uh, set up a Win BBQ, or sorry, a BBQ32 node on Windows. Today we're just going to be connecting out to one. So it doesn't matter if it's uh, a hardware uh, node somewhere on some type of TNC, or it doesn't matter if it's a software uh, node such as BBQ or JNOS. This is going to work for either one of those. Uh, the method that I'm going to talk about today is a newer application that just came out, and it's called Paracon. Paracon is just a terminal application, and it is cross-platform, which means it works on Mac, Windows, and Linux. But the only drawback is it only works with the AGWPE interface. What does all that mean? So basically, several software TNCs implement this interface. So if you're using Direwolf or if you're using the AGWPE engine, they uh, will allow this program to interface with them, which means we can use it to connect to BBS nodes. Well, it, what it won't work with at the current time are KISS TNCs. So your KISS TNCs are typically your serial ones that are hardwired into your computer. I'm probably going to do a separate video on that. Uh, but if you're using Direwolf or some one of these software TNCs, this video is basically going to work great for you. And so I'm going to go ahead and jump on to the blog post and we're going to follow along. So one of the prerequisites is that you have Python. This is a Python application and that's also what allows it to be cross-platform. So if you don't have Python and you're running Windows, you can open up python.org slash downloads and you can just hit download on the latest release and install it on your Windows computer. If you're using Linux, and I'm going to show you that right now, it's as simple as running sudo apt install python3 if you're running Debian, Ubuntu, or Raspbian OS. Too easy, right? Now, we're going to grab Paracon. Paracon, if you're on Windows, you'll visit the releases page and I'll provide the link for this release page in the description. And you're going to want this uh, .pyz file. So I'm going to save that file and I'm going to save it into a folder called Paracon. It's just going to, I've already saved it there, it's, it's overwriting. And if you're on Linux, you can also download it the same way, but being Linux users, I'm sure you guys like the terminal, right? Uh, you can also issue these two commands. So you can say install wget, just in case you don't have it. And then you can also say wget, and this is the direct link to the current release. And that will download it into your current working folder. If you type in ls, you should see that paracon.pyz file, right? Too easy. Now, Either way, if you're using Linux or you're using Windows, you're going to have to open a terminal or a command prompt wherever you downloaded the file. So if you're in Linux, as soon as you issue that wget, uh, you'll basically have the file in whatever working directory you have. Uh, otherwise, you can usually right-click if you're on the GUI and hit Open Terminal here next to the file. But if you're on Windows, you're going to open a command prompt and you need to navigate to where you downloaded that file. So for me, I put it in downloads, and then I also put it into a folder called Paracon. It, it, you might have a shortcut if you shift right click next to the downloaded file, you might have this open in terminal, which achieves the exact same thing as what I just did. Either way, now you have a terminal where that file is. If you're on Windows, in order to open up Paracon, well, I'll show you Linux first, actually. If you're on Linux, all you have to do is type in Python 3, and then you'll put that name of the PYZ file with the PYZ. And that's going to open Paracon for you. That's that simple. Um, now, I'm going to open it on Windows, basically the same thing, except for Python 3, we're just going to say Python. So Python, space, and then the name of the file. Great, so Paracon's open, and I'm going to close it out on this back screen because I don't need it on both. Uh, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to type in the host address of your um, AGWPE server. So 
If you're using Direwolf and it's running on the same machine you're on, it'll be 127.0.0.1. For me, it's running on 10.10.20.81. And next thing it's going to do is ask for your port, uh, which, let's see, I actually don't have. I'll have to find out real quick. So I've changed to 9998, okay? But by default, Direwolf has it on port, I believe, 8,000. So whenever you start Direwolf, it should show you right here as it does mine. So once you have that in there, you also want to put your call sign, obviously, and you're going to hit OK. And with any luck, you'll see this show up as the server up here, and you'll also see it pop up in your Direwolf or whatever terminal or sound TNC you're using, right? So... If you hit F1, it's going to show you some of these commands, the shortcuts for things that you might want to do. Uh, if you ever want to go change some of those settings that we had just set up, you can go to Setup. But in our case, we're going to go ahead and hit Connect. And for the call sign, this is going to be the call sign of the node you're going to connect to. And we're going to cross our fingers and hope that this other node is running properly because I was having some technical issues earlier. And that was at KN4MKB-4. So you will find a node that you want to connect to, whether it be on HF or VHF, right? If you want to use an intermediary station, so you can't directly connect to the, the person you need to, you can uh, specify this, and it's kind of like a digipeter. So we're going to hit OK. And with any luck, your radio should be connecting out, and hopefully the node's responding, right? Awesome. So as you can see, I am connected to... KN4 NKV-4, which is a DigiPi node. And from here, you can do all the things that you would normally do when you connect to a node, right? Uh, depending on, you know, who's linked, you can do talk, so you can open up a chat window. Um, in this case, this one's got, like, uh, you can do Zork. You can do lots of stuff. So I'm going to put in a question mark, and it's going to reply back with lots of commands. And... This is basically what you typically see when you connect to a radio BBS. It may not have all of this stuff. It depends on what they're hosting. But this is the general gist of things. If you do a question mark, it usually shows you all of the commands. Um, I'm just going to open one up for fun. Let's do, and I don't even think email's set up, so I don't know what would happen if I did open it. I don't know. Let's we'll see what happens if we do open email. I'm sure it's going to give me some type of error, but... Just wanted to show you guys like how it works, right? I don't know what I'm in now. That's interesting. Oh, it's a login challenge for WinLink. I don't know how to do that without just sending my password. So we're not going to get into that. You guys saw that's basically the gist of it. That's how you use Paracon and Direwolf to actually connect to a radio BBS. So I hope that this was insightful. Uh, you know, Paracon is, seems to be a very like useful application. I will say uh, I, I attempted to do a, uh, a connection with what would be uh, T, uh, QT term TCP. Uh, this is also in this blog post that I'm going to put in the description for different ways to connect, which includes Q, uh, QT term for serial TNCs and KISS TNCs, as well as KISS attach for Linux with KISS TNCs or Direwolf. Anyways, I had a lot of issues uh, with QT term TCP. And it kind of reinforces, like, we need modern programs, modern languages, so that we have stable and secure applications. Because this was a nightmare. Um, if you can't hear it in the tone of my voice, I had a lot of problems with it. It does work occasionally. If you follow these instructions, you will be able to connect to a radio BBS. Uh, but Paracon, if you're running Direwolf and you have that AGWPE support, please consider running uh, Paracon with Direwolf. Because you guys saw how easy it was. It was seamless. There was no application crashes. It just connected and everything worked. So hopefully you guys can get that up and running as well. Hopefully uh, this you guys found this video useful. I you know showed you how to set up your own BBS nodes a couple weeks ago. And I just wanted to make sure I do a video on how to actually connect out to a BBS node. And so uh, this right here kind of follows along that, that theme. Uh, it also includes different instructions, right? This blog post I'm going to put in the description with all these links. 
it has different ways to connect to BBS nodes. It's not limited to Paracon. You can also use Serial. You can also use KISS. So uh, make sure to check that out if you want to use a different method or if you have the hardware TNC. But that's basically it for the video. I, I think that pretty much wraps things up. Everything worked well with Paracon. So go check it out. The project's pretty cool. And that'll be it. 73 to you.